Hi, I'm Abby. Welcome to this unboxing today. It's a Janome. It's a DC6030. It's been around six years. It's um, an old model. But opening the box, the first thing I get is the instruction book. And because it's an old model, you still get the DVDs in there. And I suppose people might still be using DVDs and CD players. Take a good look through this. So we've got the instruction book. And then inside we've got our cable. And then let me just lift these off. Yeah, they come off quite easily. And inside I can see my bag of accessories. So I've got some bobbins in there, needles in there, lots of different feet in there. We'll open that up in a minute. And an extension table which is always a good thing, isn't it? We've got a hard case for the machine. Let's see if we can pull that out. Okay, so I've got a nice hard case there. And of course, I have my machine. And this is what the machine looks like doesn't look too bad does it it's very square very angled and the 30 stands for the 30 stitches which you can see all here there's no font there's no um there's no special stitches on there it's just your main utility stitches and i suppose there are some decorative stitches but nothing fancy so it's a shame but what this machine does offer is it gives you longer stitches so you can elongate your decorative stitches up to five times so that's fantastic but it's the same stitches so there's nothing special about it well let's have a look at this extension table and see how far it comes up this fits on easily it doesn't clip in anywhere um, that i can see and it doesn't sit flush with the table now you can see I'm on a good solid surface here, but um, there's a sort of a step up. There's a ding there, isn't there? That doesn't give me a nice flush table. And actually, it's moving up and down. So when I'm sitting here sewing and I want accuracy, which is what I want for £579, I want accuracy. I do not want this moving up and down, especially when I'm doing something silky shift bonds i need that to stay solid with the machine point, but it's not that point the, this is a curve so you, you can't you can't unless they made this a curve as well there's no way they can match that unless unless they did make a curve. and it was in the box so you think that they'd make it and design it so it fits and suits this particular model wouldn't you so we've got a foot pedal here and the foot pedal is separate from the mains ped, uh, plug. All right, let's take a closer look at what's inside our accessories bag. Okay, so, whoops, we have three bobbin reels there. Let's see if we've got one in the machine set. Um, it looks like we do, so we'll get four of those. You get a twin needle, um, a blue tip needle. It's a 75 needle or 11. Spool caps, because you'll need a spool cap. We've got one on the machine, so you get two large ones and two little ones so that you can use, you can use your spool caps for the twin needle um, spindle there. And that will fit on the machine in this special hole there. You have a screwdriver. Your usual brush and um, stitch ripper. So here are the feet. We've got an over edge foot. Now the Janome ones have the brush on them, which is really good feature because it brushes away all the frayed edges. So that's a really nice one to use if you want to fake overlock your work. Then you've got a similar looking one here, which is your blind hem foot it's got that black um, piece on there so that's um, excellent for um, blind hem you've got your zip foot 
uh, a quarter inch foot here. That's great for quilting so that you've got the markings on there for when you want to turn corners and you've got your satin stitch foot. Now, normally you get a buttonhole foot. So I'm going to have a look inside the extension box and see if there's anything I've missed in here and I have. So inside here, we've got the buttonhole foot and another plastic bag that contains uh, the buttonhole stabilizer unit. <laughs> So this is a buttonhole stabiliser um, piece. And what that's for is when you're using this on thick fabrics, which is, you know, in theory, very, very good. Let's plug it in. Right, so that's it. <laughs> Nothing exciting happens when you switch it on. It just little beep and we see the screen. Now, looking at the screen, there clearly isn't an image of the designs that we're doing. So if I select that stitch, it just gives me the stitch number that I've pressed and it shows me the zigzag and the uh, straight stitch. If I press buttonhole, won't be different. I mean, it shows me that I need to bring the lever down. I need to make sure that I use the buttonhole foot for all that. So I've got 30 different stitches. The button I press lights up. If I press the twin needle button, so if I select blind hem with a twin needle function, it will flash the twin needle basically telling me that I can't do the um, blind hem stitch with a twin needle function, so I would need to get rid of that. So if I want to elongate stitches, I can press that E there, and it will make the stitch longer up to five times. We've got a few utility stitches and your stretch stitch, and then you, uh, you've only got one candlewick stitch, one really pretty stitch, I would say, and the rest are buttonhole and your darning and um, a hole. So my green light's there for go and if I lift up the presser foot that should change to red to say that I can't stitch but it's still on green so maybe it's ready for free motion I don't know and if I put that to no just stays green but it won't let me stitch Oh, oh, that's pretty slow. Let's increase the speed. So it's either slow or fast. That's not very sensitive. Okay, so that's the DC6030 from Janome. It comes with six extra feet. You get this uh, buttonhole foot with the idea that you can do thicker fabrics. You get your standard accessories in there. You've got a DVD video, um, which um, I don't have a DVD player, but luckily was able to find a video on YouTube. You get um, your instructions and an extension box. It came with an extension table. So overall thinking, um, it's got 30 stitches, they include your utility stitches, they include your eyelet, your three buttonholes um, and um, stretch stitch and just a couple of other stitches, decorative stitches. There was nothing specially fancy about the stitches, there was nothing that blew my mind, nothing that made me think I definitely recommend this to everybody. Um, even with the extension table that might be something that I might say to my students, oh consider that. The problem with the extension table, as you saw, it doesn't actually fit on the machine well. It doesn't clip in. These feet don't stand up. Um, it's a completely different finish. It's a gloss, that's a grain, it's a different colour. So that was just a waste of plastic. It just They just looked like they, didn't, they, they had a few extra extension tables. So let's throw it in there because it fits. I do like the Janome overcast foot because of the little brush doesn't always work but on thicker fabrics when I'm uh, sewing tweed it does 
So I've always liked that. That's one of the feet I do like about them. But this buttonhole, but this buttonhole foot, the extension uh, plate, I struggle to put it together. And you can see in the video I show you, it doesn't actually fit well together because it's just made from cheap plastic. It just felt really cheap and basically rubbish. And I think it's such a shame because I think the principle and the idea is there. But when you can't lift the presser foot high enough, and actually it was very tough to lift, it's very, you know, you've got to be quite strong. And a lot of my students who are maybe older, who have arthritis, will struggle to lift that. And I just think it was unnecessary to include something like this and not demonstrate it. The instructional video doesn't even show you how to use it. They tell you to refer to the manual and looking at the images in the manual, it wasn't very clear. And I had to get Pete to come and have a look at it with me to just make sure I was doing it right. So I didn't damage any part of the foot. It's not damaged, it just doesn't fit well. Um, other things about the uh, machine, um, I want to be positive because I did want to like this machine. Um, a lot of people keep pushing the name Janome and I think it comes down to the way Singer used to be. It's all about marketing, marketing, marketing. If you spend a third of your profits on marketing, then you will have your you know, machine everywhere. And I think that's all they do. I think they spend too much money on marketing and not enough in technology. This machine reminds me of the CXL 301s, which I used to teach on, and I was back and forth to Breadbury returning them because they were, so, they were just constantly faulty. Either the wiring went on the pedal, and or the buttons just didn't respond or they just you know the machine was jamming up and not working that was that was something i can see this happening with this machine um what i do like is that they have now changed the feeding mechanism on the machine so that it's a bit more like the um following a track so that you don't get faults with the bobbin overall i'm not my mind isn't blown. It isn't my favourite machine because I think potentially they're there and they have their name everywhere and everybody loves to know me. But for me, and this is my opinion, if you were to ask me, would I recommend this machine to you, this particular machine to you, I'd say no. Hang on, because they've got a newer model coming out. Let's have a look and see. There's just none on the market at the moment. As soon as I can get a hold of the newer model, I will because I definitely want to compare it with this and uh, the CX, uh, CXL 301s and see which one's better because at the moment this one for me is almost as, I don't want to say poor. I don't think it's worth the money. Basically, in a nutshell, I don't think it's worth the money. Maybe if it was 250, maybe 300 pounds, yes, but not. 579, I wouldn't put 579 pounds down for this if I were you.